Welcome to I Would Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina, and I'm so excited for today's guest. We have Tom Shalednik, who is here from The Knot, who's going to be giving so much insight and information. And we're just so honored and privileged that you're here. So welcome, well, Tom. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And but thank you for being here. I, know, I only live an hour and a half away. How couldn't I be here? That's crazy. <laughs> that you're so close. And it's like, finally, you made it happen. And I'm like, honestly, thank you so much for coming in. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Been excited for this for weeks. Oh, really? Yes. Well, you also did go on the cruise, so you come refresh yeah, and come refresh. A little tan, a little refreshed. <laughs> I just came from Austin actually yesterday. I was at an oh Austin my God, you just event got, for three so days. So you went on a cruise, then went to Austin, Texas, then came back. And, and then drove here. So he's definitely a jet setter who's ah. always traveling. So, Tom, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. So I started in this industry probably when you were in middle school, maybe, or even younger. I don't know. <laughs> about two th about 2008. I started with a knot. I had many different jobs with a knot in all those in all those uh, the first 12 years of Director of regional director of sales, director of training and enablement, leadership development. But I traveled the first ten years, um, learning from wedding pros across the country and taking that information and then disseminating that across the country via education and webinars and brochures and everything that we did we did back then. Um, I sat on a couple of venue advisory boards across the country during that time, and one of them tapped me on the shoulder 12 years in and said, hey, do you want to come work at the venue? And I'm like, no, I'm good. I sort of have a good gig here. And they kept tapping, and I'm like, well, why not? It's like, why not be the CEO of a venue and really just understand what it's like to be a wedding professional? Yeah. So I did that in the two Lux venues up in St. Augustine, Florida, and I did that for two years. Then I came back two years ago, and now I am the director of vendor engagement for The Knot Worldwide. And I back to doing what I did when I first started, traveling, learning, teaching, a lot more speaking. No such thing as podcasts 10 years ago, 12 years ago. But now there's podcasts. I know. That's it's so, so cool. Crazy. Yeah. So I, I have the best job at The Knot. The best job. I love that. You love what you do. And I also do. you're so knowledgeable. And with Tom, just a little backstory. I met him actually at one of the speaking engagements that you were like actually at. And I was like, oh, my God, I have to get him on the wow. podcast. Like he's so knowledgeable and also just so much experience and so many golden nuggets that you gave even in that, you know, um, event that we all went. It was an industry event. And I was like, oh, my God, I have to get our viewers and listeners with Tom like. Great. I'm here to help. And I'm so glad we made it happen. So, help. Tom, so let's dive into, well, you said something really key. You have been in the industry for a long time, especially knowing the events world. Tell us a little bit about where do you see the current status of it all? Like, Well, it's, it's, it's interesting. The Not Does the Largest Real Wedding Study in the World. It comes out every year. It comes out in about March. Um, over 10,000 um, couples sign up for this and give their, you know, 11 page survey on this thing. And then through the years, we, through the year, we're also interviewing 300,000 other couples and wedding pros. That's so crazy. For the first time ever, um, one of the fa distinguishing factors of this year's were a wedding study that never came into play before was the word economy. They're concerned about the economy more than ever before. They still have plenty of money. They're still getting married. But what happens when the economy is, well, your guest count goes down, you know. You start saying, who do I really like? Correct. Part of my wife? Right. They still want that great guest experience, but they're not, you know. So they're more cutting, micro? Cutting. Yes, guest count goes down. In South Florida, I know this goes nationwide, but in yeah. South Florida, um, the guest count's like about 96 on average, which isn't, you know, it's more than what was co when it was COVID yeah. time, but it's, it's still certainly down. So... You know, the other things about um, some of the distinguishing factors that's changing in, in, in the world of weddings and from that real wedding study is, for years and years, the des describing factor of their wedding was fun. I want a fun wedding, I want a fun wedding, I want a fun wedding. It's still a very important descriptor, but romantic is now the main descriptor of how they want their wedding. And that makes sort of sense now because you look at the Gen Z population who's now starting to get married, the oldest is 27, and they're a product, unfortunately, of a lot of divorce. So they romanticize this idea of having this romantic, big Wow, that's a really good wedding. point. Yeah. So why is that important for wedding pros is, you know, um, you want to show fun at your wedding, obviously, but you want to show some romantic drapes and lighting and, you know. Create the whole well, mood create, and ambiance. Create, create, create the mood. So there's so many 
the landscape of weddings is changing with Gen Z. You know, um, I'm hearing across the country that Gen Z, a lot more last minute bookings. I mean, there was a Four Seasons in somewhere in Texas and they said, we just booked a $225,000 wedding with two months notice. And that it's happening, it's happening across the country. Wow. That, that gives a lot of hope to the industry, though. It absolutely does. For the year, in the year, um, bookings are up more than they ever were before. And we continue, we'll probably see that also. The other thing, I think there's this great wedding reset out there. Um, the number of weddings. This year in 2024, we're expecting to do about 2 million weddings. Wow. That's coming off of 2.5 and 2.6 million weddings the two years before. So I asked my data analyst, I said, come on, I want to make sure this is right. Like what's happening? Because obviously leads are down, right? Right. If, because weddings are down and my wedding pros out there are starting to freak out. But we're back to that 2018, 2019 number of weddings. And it's basically just the reset. It is what it is. You know, it's, it's not that there's people aren't getting married. It's just that pent up demand is now done. With yeah. COVID. And a, and a big thing, like you said, is just people are so focused on the romantic experience. So they're focusing a lot on, hey, let's have a couple guests. Like you said, 96 is the, this kind of the number that we're at. And let's make it the most memorizing type of wedding. Guest experience. That's it. That's the big thing. Guest experience. So for wedding pros, how are you showing the type of guest experience you can do in your website, in your social media, in your blogs, in your videos? You know, that's right. very, very important. The other thing with this, with the next generation, with Gen Z and, and younger millennials, is stress, there's more stress than ever before. Yes, I agree. You, I and look, we were just talking about your wedding. It's stressful to plan a wedding, right? It's very stressful. <laughs> and even being in the business, and I can't imagine all of you that are planning your wedding and you're seeing everything and it, it must be like a, a shock to see the numbers and every, all the variables that are involved because it's just not, Oh yeah, we're getting married. It's like, what's next? Oh yeah, we got to book a photographer for save the dates. We have to do this. Oh, the venue. Venues are not requiring a year to two year in advance notice most of the time because if they're popular, they're booked. They're booked. Same yeah. thing with bands. Yeah. Booked. You know, and couples never planned a wedding before. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what the cost is or what they, you know, in a particular category, a particular market. So for wedding pros, knowing that stress is a major factor of uh, the couples, well, show them, tell them, explain to them how if you hire me as your designer or you hire me as your photographer or your venue, I'm going to take the stress away from you. So you're going to connect with those couples even, even more. You're alleviating that, which is kind of like where you play such a vital role in their whole planning process and design because you're saying like listen don't worry i got you like i know this is stressful for you but you're in good hands which vendors sometimes forget that that experience is the most important thing absolutely they want guest experience for their guests but they're also looking for a, a good experience the pros that i see um, becoming more successful and booking more weddings in these in, in these times are showing that they don't just book it you know, and forget it for eight months because the wedding's not eight months away. They have consistent contact with these couples for, you know, every month or every few weeks, even some of them, because why? Referral business, yeah. right? Like if you pick, you book the great videographer or planner, even before your wedding, one of your friends are going to get married that's, and they had that great experience during the time before, they're most likely to reach out to you and give you a referral. And that whole referral process, let's say it's someone new to the industry, how can they work at building something like that? As far as the the connection, like, the, the like yeah, because I we always focus on telling, especially like say someone who's in the industry, like our students and stuff, making like you know at those networking events, making connections with other vendors, or just being bold and googling the vendor and then going to their actual like flower shop or the, you know like where they're going to be maybe doing a DJ set or something. It's so important so you can start building a connection with them because without vendors, I mean. In the event industry, we're all about collaboration. Correct. It takes a village to create an event. Correct. And you, when you're building those relationships, you can't have a relationship with every planner or every venue out there. You got to figure out who your ideal client is. And then you got to figure out, then you got to like do the research of that particular venue. We'll pick on venues. That particular venue, do they have the similar client that you're after? Yes or no? That is so key. What you right. said right there, that's golden. It's knowing if that is even the type of like clients you're going to like want to work with or even know how to work with is another thing. Absolutely. So here's a tip. 
for students, for pros, whatever. Everybody wants on the vendor, the venue vendor list, right? And those poor venues are getting knocked on the door all non-stop. day long, nonstop, <laughs> and et cetera, et cetera. What distinguishes you to get them on the list? Could, if you're a photographer, you're a photographer. There's many ways to distinguish who you are, but you still got to connect with them. So my suggestion is, is call the venue, pick three venues next month. That ideal clients, location-wise, spend everything and say, hey, my name is Tom and I am a photographer and I want to see if we can work together. I'd like to shadow a few weddings with you. I'll roll up my sleeves, I'll flip the room, I'll clean the toilets, I'll sweep the floors, I'll serve dinner, whatever. I just want to get a feel for your venue. Not many venues are going to say no to free help. Yeah, that's, and that's there's a, a good connection point. then. You have this connection with the director of catering or the sales manager or the event manager or whoever whoever that may be. But don't think of it just as a venue. Let's talk about it as a photographer. Just carry the bags around if you want to, you know, understand what a photographer does or a videographer does or a planner does. Planners um, never get asked for people to shadow you know, other vendors, like really? It just makes logical sense. So where I see successful, the question was, how can somebody just getting started in the industry or somebody has been in the industry a long time, time. get on list and make connections, just ask them to help. I'd like to help in the next couple of weddings. It's just just an investment of time. So simple and at the same time, I think something a lot of people overlook because what happens is they think, especially new designers or even a a designer has been established or planner, they become stagnant, right? And they forget that you just assisting and kind of going back to like the root and base of building a business, which is helping out, you can learn so much from, but no, they just like expect to go to the venue and say, hey, I want to be on your vendors list, put me on. Doesn't work. It doesn't work that way, right? I always tell people, I'm like, no, you have to put in the work for it. Put in the work for it. You You want to be an option to couples wherever they're looking. And they're looking in more than just a venue vendor list, but that's one place that they're looking. Yeah. So, um, so I challenge you all out there, you know, especially is in some markets like in South Florida, we're starting to get busy, right? So it's been a tough summer. Now we're going to start to get busy and people are going to, people are going to look, right. People are going to look for the help. Okay. So I guess after like hearing that, like how can people increase their leads? Like how can, like you said, as, uh, assisting and helping, but like, let's say how can, if you're a venue owner or a planner or a designer, how can you adapt and work with Gen Z and the new millennials that have a different way of thinking from before? Okay, do we have another three hours? But we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, get, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna spark this, yeah. So um, <laughs> let's talk about, let's talk about a generational shift that's happened. Okay, right. Perfect. So pros or businesses that have been around a long time, that have been through generational shifts before, realize that they need to take a look at their entire business. They've got to look at their products, their pricing, their marketing, their advertising, how they're responding, when they're responding, where they're advertising. You name it. They're looking at ev- everything that they're doing. And is it connecting and is it aligning with Gen Z? There's so much Gen Z education out there. We can do another podcast on that. But um, is, is it aligning? The people, if you if you can go to the future three years ahead from today and you look back at your business the way it is right now, the people that are going to be successful have realigned their businesses and changed a lot of that. So that's that's number one. So where do you go and, and, and find more leads? Well, first off, do you need more leads? Don't know. So one of my frustrations is, as I'm consulting with professionals and helping professionals grow their business, I'll even ask a simple question, how many weddings do you want to do next year? Some they of them, don't know. Some, they don't, don't know. some of them don't yeah. know you know, or what, how much revenue do you want to do? Start from the basics, know the math, right? So, you know, you want to do a hundred weddings, make it easy, make do it a hundred weddings. Well, are you getting enough leads to do those hundred weddings? I don't know. How do you figure that out? Well, you figure that out by you take the total number of leads that you've had and you divide it by the total number of bookings over a certain period. And that might be 5%. Meaning my leads to booking ratio is 5%. If I want to do 100 weddings, then I, I hope my math is correct, then I need to get 2,000 leads. Yeah. So are you getting those 2,000 leads? Maybe, maybe not. Do you, are you getting enough leads that maybe you increased um, your leads, you work on increasing your leads to booking percentage? 
maybe. So that's sort of the first step. Where, where you, how many leads do you need to hit your goals? And then you start looking, you know, on average, um, a couple goes, if it's not a referral, they're looking for you in four different places. Which are? It varies, but obviously they're not wedding wire. Yes. Right. I mean, that is one just, of the number one sources. So, yep. You know, with with we get um, nine thousand new members a day, four thousand downloads on our app a day. What? We have two point one million new couples every 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 single year. Twenty one million unique visits here. I mean, the numbers are just staggering. You know, regardless. That's explosive. Right. So the app alone, seventy eight percent of couples in the U.S. use the not app. You have to be there in one way, shape, or It's your form. one-stop shop. I mean, is the did not. Did you use the not? Yes, your... I did. I'm not going to lie. I have my profile on the not. <laughs> and I didn't, we didn't even, we didn't even, you know, I didn't we even ask you that did, question. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so like, but then um, you want to look at where your competitors are. And everybody in that particular market in that category is not your competitor. It's back to like picking the three to five people that are competitors. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously look at their social media game. Look where they're at in the not in wedding wire. SEO plays a big game. Your website is your front door to your business. It, it was 20 years ago. It's still your front yeah. door to your business. And are you investing anything in that when somebody's searching wedding planners in Boise, Idaho? Are you coming up or aren't you coming up? But that SEO game is a long game, and it's not an inexpensive game for you to start ranking high. It's a, it's, it's a long game. So first, look to see how many leads you need. Then you got to spend money to make money. Period. The end. And I know as a new business, that needs to be that's on tough. a t-shirt and I think on a painting because that is key right there. It's key right there. <laughs> so um, a venue that I work very closely with, and they do like three, two different venues, uh, same ownership, and they do about 300 weddings a year. And it's about a $5 million rental, bu rental business. It's a big business. Oh, wow. They spend $200,000 a year on overall advertising. Last year, they spent $78,000 on the not wedding wire. But they do such a good job at tracking, which that's a whole other thing, tracking return on investment. They, they booked $1.1 million. They gave us $78,000. We gave them $1.1 million back. Wow. So you consistently need to, you can't just throw it out there and not track it so you can make decisions based on facts, not feelings. Facts, not, not feelings. feelings. Math does not lie. Yeah. So and like big thing, like you said, a return on investment because they invested in something but also look how much they got in return. Because again, if you may have a beautiful venue, you may have the best planning services, the best DJ services, but if you're not being marketed in that right sector. Nobody can find you. No you're, one will find, no one not knows a, of your services. You're, you're not, not an option. And that goes, that's not just for new wedding pros, that's for existing wedding pros yeah. too. You know, everybody that, you know, how many times you get on a venue list, and you're on a venue list for three years, and then that director of venue catering left and the new director of catering put everybody else on the list. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a constant it's a constant work to make sure that you're showing up where your where your couples are. But first you got to figure out where your couples are. Yeah. Which would you say is like the what would be the number one strategy to basically leveling and growing your leads? Like the, the it's I think it's it you can't just put all your eggs in one basket in social media. You can't just put it all in Google AdWords or SEO. You can't just put it all in the not. I think that the, I'm confident that the top three things are being on the largest platforms there are, which are wedding wire and the not. And this isn't an advertisement for them in any way, shape, or form. It's just the math the doesn't, yeah. the, it's the reality. The math doesn't lie. You need to have um, a great website with, and put energies and effort in it so it starts to rank. And you need a social media, you need a social media presence. You know, now if you had all the money in the world, you'd be doing Google AdWords. You would be spending a lot of money on Instagram. You'd be spending money on Facebook. You'd be giving the not in the wedding wire. But there's not a lot of money in the world. There's, you don't have a lot of money in the world, so you got to figure out where are your couples. Mm -hmm. Basically, where are their competitors at? If they're not giving the not in wedding wire money every single month, if they're not getting a return on investment, right? And and. And then put it out there and and track 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 so you can make educated decisions if it's working or not. But sometimes you put it out there, you can't just set it and forget it. You can't just do a website and never look at it again. You can't just do a Which not happens so often with right, many people. You can't just do a not in wedding wire ad uh, or a storefront and forget it. The photos need consistently updated, changing the videos, always asking for reviews, responding to reviews. 
pricing. Hey. Yeah, how, like what would you say, because you said pricing right now, about pricing. Should vendors, if you are an event designer, planner, DJ, any, you know, any type of vendor in the industry, should you be very transparent with your pricing or should you just hold your cards really tight? That's always like the argument or even something when I go to networking events, they're like, no, I don't show them. Like I have others like, absolutely. So what's your take on it with your experience? Um, experience firsthand over and over and over again. And part of our studies that we do, 80% of couples feel that the most important thing that they do before they look at for before they send a lead is pricing. Some sort of pricing is imperative. I know that if you have pricing on your not wedding wire storefront, you're gonna get more leads than if you don't have also, anything. Like, where it says right. like message, you have to message the-, the Correct, yeah. right. There should, you know, we have many different tools with pricing on yeah. it. And we are really pushing that this year because we get um, calls from couples all the time and saying, it's frustrating because this person doesn't have pricing. It's so true. It's frustrating they haven't called me back and all these things. The other thing within your website, I understand that, you know, catering, for instance, you know, it's a 27 page menu and the pricing is different and all that, all that stuff, but you need to have some sort of pricing on your website. Price ranges from this to this, couples usually spend that, you know, even if it's just that or some sort of ranges. Um, Google is a, a business. And we are Google's clients, right? Like we're consumers. And when I'm Googling chainsaws, you know, yeah. at Home Depot and pricing, they're all, they, uh, well, even I don't put pricing, they're just going to give me chainsaws with pricing on it because Google knows the results that their customers, me, wants is something with pricing on it. Yeah, they filter so already through that they process. Filter, right. And if, if you don't have pricing, your SEO actually goes down. So... And that is a thousand percent true because me being on the other end, which Tom and I were talking about earlier, is as a bride now, I'm in the industry, but as a bride now, I'm curious and I'm seeing also like, what are people charging for certain services? And the knot is the source that I'm using. And I am more likely to click on the people that are more transparent about their pricing versus someone that I have to message or follow up with, and sometimes they don't follow up immediately. And immediately, if they don't follow up within a day, I discard them from my vendor list. Oh, we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> and you're 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 no different than yeah, I'm all a, other yeah. people that shop. Yeah, for whatever bride. wedding, bride, bride, groom, couple, whatever, or shop just for anything out yeah. there. Mm -hmm. You know what? What it, when you when I'm curious when you found a I'm making it up a um, a scenario a florist. Okay found a florist and what did you ask what's my pricing and what's your availability yes right or a photographer what's your pricing and what's your availability yes. right pricing availability and uh, a big thing was communication how if they followed up which I will say that if they took a couple days or even a week or they lost me because already I if I submitted a form and immediately got some kind of comfort, you know, confirmation back, and there were some vendors in the not like for specifically photographers, which we were talking about it, I'm more inclined to meet with those that I saw were fast on it because it shows me that they're on their business and that they're reliable. At least that first kind of guard of wall that I have is broken down in that first sector. So yes. We need to do a reverse podcast. <laughs> I need to take you with me. <laughs> on the road across the country so that you can just tell these people exactly what you just said, <laughs> you know, rather than waiting three days to follow up. Yeah. And, you know, it's the biggest it, it, thing, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. So it's a, it, I, in this role, I talk to thousands of, of, of wedding pros a month and hundreds of wedding pros in one on ones a month sometimes. And I always have this thing, always say this catchphrase of, do you have a lead problem or do you have a booking problem? Because you're getting leads, right? But you're not booking them. So whose fault is that? <laughs> yeah. You know, who's, what like, do you? Whose fault is that? And there's a thumb pointing back at them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, nobody's perfect. They're not, wedding wire's not yeah. perfect. No, you know, all, all, all of those things. But at the end of the day, if you're getting leads and you're not booking them, something's wrong. Is it your follow-up? Is it your package? Is it your pricing? What, what is, what is wrong? Most times I can help them and it's it's about their lead replies and I can I can um, fix that for them or help them with that. 
and guide them through that and process. Guide them through that, absolutely. So, as a designer and also as a future bride to be, I have one store that I cannot stop going to, and that's Event Decor Direct. Event Decor Direct has your one stop shop for all decor items from fabrics to hardware to ceiling draping to dance floor wrap prints and so much more. It is honestly obsessing how much I can just look through here and I'm like, Hmm, I should add that to my event. As all of you that are listeners and viewers, you get iWet Uncut 11 as your code to get 11% off on the website. All you have to do is put iWet Uncut 11 to get 11% off. And you will see that your design process will become so much easier. So whether you're a designer, a bride to be, or someone who just loves the industry and loves designing, this is your one-stop shop. So Tom, let's talk about converting leads into bookings. You had already mentioned so much of the different factors that are involved, but like, what would you say are some key strategies to really assist anyone who's struggling with that? Right, so you said it earlier, following up as soon as you can possibly follow up with every lead that you get. Um, last year, a couple was emailing three to five, um, particular vendors in that category. This year, they're emailing five to eight. So your competition just got much, much bigger. So, you know, if this is their inbox and this is your email in their inbox, right? And all the other replies are coming back in, your email's just getting buried, 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 buried. That's buried, actually buried, a good buried. point. Some statistics here. Um, if you follow up at least seven times, follow up seven times over the course of 30 days, you're not getting ghosted. You're getting lost in their inbox. Couples are two times, 2.2 times more likely to respond if you to you if you reply under three hours, and couples are 2.7 times more likely to respond when you ask a question. So, um, those are just some really high level statistics here, right? But that also shows how much of a small window you have as a vendor, and you need to like jump on the opportunity when you get it, meaning. Correct. I mean, you paid for that lead. Yeah. The other thing that, that, that vendors don't really know the number to, which always just blows my mind because you're spending your hard earned money, what is your cost per lead? If you take all of the leads you got over the past six months, divided by all the marketing, advertising, social media dollars, networking dollars, everything you did to nurture to get a lead and divide, those num divide that number, you'll know then what your cost per lead is. And that varies in market and category and how much you're spending, all these things. But say you're spending $53 a lead. If you know you're spending $53 a lead, doesn't that give you a sense of urgency that you better follow up quickly? And not only follow up quickly, don't get lost in their inbox. Yeah. So um, at minimum, over the course of 30 days, we follow up seven times. So what does that look like, right? Lucky number seven. Lucky number seven. Think lucky number seven. So in that day one, you get the you get the email, and that email um, they're asking for what? Price. Price. And availability. So available good news. Today? Good news. We're available at this time on February fifteenth. Our price ranges from this to this. Couples usually spend this. And when I use that this price range from this to this, this is like a wedding on a Tuesday morning compared to a wedding on a high holiday somewhere, right. right? But the couples usually spend is what my ideal couple spends. So if you're a photographer and you're you're ranging from $2,000 to $15,000, and but my average couple, my ideal couple is spending six, that's what I'm putting in there because I want to connect with that $6,000 couple. Do right? you think that's like, it's important vendors don't make such a huge range and they just kind of like narrow down to being like, two to three K or two to five K make the range. Cause you want people, you want somebody to call you, right? The goal of your lead replies is ultimately to book them. Yeah. But the first step of the goal is what to get somebody to call you or hit reply, you need that gain a two way, gain a two way conversation. So when we give them so much information on that first email and we, we give them a link to a PDF with just a four page, um, sheet on pricing and we give them a link to a menu and all these things. No, 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 no. Stop it. Don't give them all that information. This is a tip. I just thought of this. I, I didn't have them on my notes, but we should, we should talk about this. Um, take your email reply, your first one, for instance, give it to somebody that's not in the industry, give it to your neighbor, your cousin, whatever, and ask them to read that. And then silently count in your head to 12, one, two, three to 12. And then you tell them stop. Okay. 
and then ask them a couple of questions. What were your takeaways? Did it encourage you to hit reply? Or did it encourage you um, to, to, continue, or to continue to read? Nine and a half times out of 10, none of those things. Because people put it's in their scary. lead replies, they'll, they'll, it's a big, long run on sentence. There's 600 words. You keep lead replies under 150 words because the attention span of even myself reading an email if I don't get something out of it in 12 seconds, I'm not reading it. Yeah, anymore. it's like watching a movie. If you don't get the first couple minutes. Right. So it's a it's great <laughs> it's a great tool for you to use, especially as we move into engagement season here. So your first email is give pricing availability. And then the rest of your emails are all about building trust and rapport um, to get them to hit reply. So the second email is, is give them, you know, hey, did my first email make it through your spam folders? Give them something. Um, hey, many of our couples, I'm making this up, use this wonderful wedding timeline template or a must-have music template or a must-have photo shot template. Give them something. The, um, the third email is a promotion. I like this idea of a promotion. Why? It is because if they're emailing five other florist or videographers or whatever it may be, I want your business to stand out in front of all the other ones. So on day nine, after the initial email, we have day one email, day three email, day nine, then we're doing this promotion. Hey, did you get that wedding planning template? Great news, over the next 20 days, we're, run, we're running a, a company promotion. Pick one of three different things. It's probably already in your package. Just pluck them out because it, if you give them, a you got to give something to get something. It, it, it encourages you to stay top of mind and prioritizes your business compared to all those other five. So then, day fourteen, I like this. Did you know email? It sort of is like a braggadocious email about your company. We've done three hundred weddings, and we have these reviews, and we've won the best of weddings on the knot, and couples choice award over here. The day twenty email, it's another. Um, tip or it is something being helpful. A like a tip, blog article in a well, way. Well, no, I don't want to link them to somewhere else. Make it easy. Once you take them somewhere off yeah. of an email, then they got to go back and find your email to hit reply. Gotcha. Right? So you want something that keeps them there to reply keeps them back like, to you. Right. Yeah. Like, so this, it, it could be an easy tip like, hey, um, you want to keep people on the dance floor? Well, when you're doing your seating charts, Put all the people that are like to dance close to the dance floor. Yeah. That's for us is normal because we're somewhat in yeah. the industry, but to somebody else, it's not. Yeah. So that's the day 20. Day 26, my six email is all these sort of a summary of everything I sent you. I sent you the wedding pricing. I sent you a uh, wedding timeline. I sent you promotions. I sent you a tip. You still haven't called me. Like, what's, what's going on? And that last one is the last ditch email um, on day 30. And it's like, hey, I'm getting worried. Are you okay? I've sent you a bunch of emails. One of three things have happened. You found another wedding photographer. Oh, that's sad. You could say you f um, you're no longer getting married. Oh, that's really sad. Or you're just wedding planning has done you in and you're binging 90 day fiance. What kind, what type of candy should I send you? That's actually really, it's, it's a good, like, it shows a little sass. Yeah. It shows, you know, and when I was running, kind of funny. when I was working at the venues, and and th I call it the last ditch email. This is usually the most number one responded email. Now you might not want to say you're no longer getting married, but you could say you're working a lot of overtime to pay for this wedding. I you haven't even thought time. about your wedding at all. Right, something like that. But yeah. you got to you got to do that. So it's really really important to come up with that cadence. And I. I my, my information will be at the end of this, I'm guessing. Shoot me an email. I'll take a look at all, who's ever listening. I'll take a look at all your emails and give you feedback. I'll be honest, but I'll give you feedback and I'll help you. <laughs> now, one thing though, um, I can't ask you to follow up seven times over the course of 30 days and do it manually. It's physically impossible. Right. Especially if you get a, quite a few leads a month. So you have to have some sort of CRM that has a workflow built in. Which for the viewers or listeners that don't know what CRM are, maybe you're completely new. It's a client relations management system. And it is key for your business to succeed. You can't, like you said, you can't do it alone. If you like, it's not like, I always t like tell the students this in the class. I'm like, it's not like back in the day where we had to print out MapQuest directions in order to get to the next space. It, it wasn't on the phone before. It was, you go print it out and you're reading it and you, you have like a co-pilot that's reading it as reading you go. It. And before you just jot down, oh, we met with this client. Okay, this is this, this is what they wanted, this, this, and this. Okay, I'll call you back 
and, and take down their info and pray to God you don't lose that paper. Now it's been such a facilitated process that I think people forget our humble beginnings. Yep. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, and, and, and a CRM manages, depending on the CM, manages every aspect of your business. Your leads come into your CRM. You're able to respond through those leads, put them on a workflow, so those automatic, automatic emails go out. And if that couple responds, the CRM will stop that workflow because you're you're doing something else. But your accounting is hooked to it. Your contracts are hooked to it, etc. If you don't have a CRM and your business doesn't warrant a CRM or anything like that, you still need a workflow. So there's software out there like Flowdesk, which I personally use for my side business, um, MailChimp, that you know you build these seven email templates. The first email though is as personalized as you can get it. Right. Right. So the first email is yes, you want to give pricing and availability, but you also want to stock them. Like on the knot, on and um, it will say. If the couple wants to share your their wedding website, there's a click. Let's look at their wedding website. Oh, you went to FSU. Oh, I see that you went to FSU. It will also share if the couple wants to, and most a lot of them do, will share the vision board. Oh, you want rustic colors. How beautiful that will be. You know, it might share who the venue they've already chosen. You want to personalize that. But the rest of them are just all templated because you don't have time. Now, if you have a phone number, should you call it? Yes. yes. Yes, that the very first day you call it. If you, you have a call, number of gold, right, more than call, an email. Right, you call it, you text it, you call, call it, probably leaving a message. You text saying, hey, I just left you a message. I'm about to send you an email. Then over those course of 30 days, you got to call at least three or four more times. Yes. So let's say then you did this and they emailed you back on, and say, set up a consultation. Well, then this is where a lot of people miss, right, to book more, book more leads. Um, a sales consultation helps you um, take the time to prep and plan for a sales consultation. You're taking the time to do a little research on the client and you follow steps, right? So the first step of a sales consultation, no matter what category you're is, you're setting an agenda. So Lucy, today what I'd like to do is ask you a few questions about your, about your wedding. What do you want? What you don't want? Tell you a little bit about us. And if it's okay, maybe rec make a recommendation in next steps. Does that sound okay to you? Yes. So that's setting an agenda. Why is setting an agenda important to sales consultation? Because it's giving me, as a salesperson, the framework of how it's going to go. It and sets the tone. It sets the tone and giving you it. Then you're, then you're doing your needs analysis question, which most people do a pretty good job at that. Where people don't do a good job is the show and tell. So after you found out their must-haves at their weddings and their must-not-haves at their weddings, people usually jump to a recommendation. No, especially in today's world with, with this generation, is it's where you're showing and telling about your business. Now, let's talk a little bit about us. And you're, again, you're sort of being braggadocious, but you um, are remembering what they said in the needs analysis and trying to bring that up. Then we get to a recommendation. And Lucy, you said earlier that you're looking for a sweeping white curtain in the back of your, sorry, I'm not a wedding Backdrop. Planner. Backdrop of your, oh, your, of your head ceremony, yeah. and you want ceremony. purple yeah. this under da, 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 da. Based on what you said to me, I'm going to recommend this. So see how I'm using what, they're, what they said when, in their needs and outs, what mm -hmm. their wants were, and I'm making the recommendation. So, and then after that, we do the close. So the steps to the cell are um, set the agenda, needs analysis, show and tell, recommendation, and, and close. Wow, the we show and tell is important. It. Show and tell is important. Most people don't do it. They get so excited for the needs analysis pro pro because, oh, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. They skip over it. And if you're not showing value, especially if you're not the cheapest price out there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got to say why I'm, I'm good and why we are a good fit. So it's a, it's a combination of getting more leads to book. Number one, you have to have a great follow-up process, um, software to be able to do that. And then it, you know, once you finally get them on the phone or in person, you should have a, I, I really strongly suggest you actually type out your sales consultation, the perfect agenda, needs and outs, da, 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 da. I don't want you to be a robot, but if you do that, it just becomes natural. I can't do a sales consultation without following those steps. If I miss one, I'm blah, 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 I'm all over the place at that point, so. Which is one of the biggest things Tom, that I think a lot of people tend to have an oversight with, which is you're in the sales business if you're in the event industry. 
which that means that you have an amazing service, product, or talent. But if you don't know how to put it in front of someone else to take the bait of booking and paying, what are we doing? Yep. You, there's nothing to service if you can't sell. Yeah. Nothing. There's nothing to serve. And there's so much free education out there on um, selling um, your, your products and services. Take, take look at the Knot has hundreds of webinars yeah. on, 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 on that alone. But take advantage of all those things. Yeah. So, Tom, this takes us to what have been some real life scenarios or situations that you could share with our listeners and uh, viewers that you know, you've seen that have been very impactful, that you've seen how they've struggled, have become, maybe they were reluctant at the beginning or they were very successful because they listened. What have been some of the things you've seen vendors kind of challenge with, like, do they listen all the way? Do they kind of fight you on it? Like, give us a little insight on that. So I have to share this story. Like I said, at the beginning of this, I just got back from Austin. The Knot did a wedding pro experience, 200 and some people. And at lunchtime, they broke us out into tables. And my table had about 20 people on it. And we talked about leads, sort of like we, what we just talked about. And I brought up the fact of phone numbers. And OK, when you get a phone number, are you calling it? Not one person on that table said they're calling it. I was what are dumb, they doing I'm with dumb, it? Nothing. I'm dumbfounded, right? Like, you paid for that lead. Somewhere along the line, you paid for that lead. It has, if it came through your website, came from us, whatever, there's a phone number there. Like, well, I, I said, well, why don't you call? Well, I don't want to be intrusive. But if they give you a phone number, they're giving you the opportunity, they're saying it's okay to call and text, yeah. right? Like, and um, you're in sales. I said, the one person said, you know, I don't want to be intrusive. A couple of them said that. I'm like, do you have all the business you want? No. Are you struggling this year more than last year? Yes. Yeah. So what are you going to do differently? So anyway, um, there's an officiant at the end of the table and he goes, oh, look, I just got a lead from the knot. I swear. I couldn't have paid this, right? I just got a lead from that. I said, does it have the phone number? He goes, yes. I said, call it. And he goes, I've never called before. And everybody's like, call it, really? call it, call He's it, call it. Really? never called before? So he, he's going to send me a video testimony, hopefully. And anyway, so he called it, and he booked it. He booked it. Like, it, it, it could have been. Was he nervous? Like, what was yeah, he, he was nervous. But like, hey, this is da-da-da-da-da. have some questions for you. The time, date, da 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 I mean, he was great on the phone. He sounded fantastic on the phone. You know, his personality as an officiant just came through, you know. And so he's booked it. I'm like, wow, this is like from heaven. Like, really? I, I can't make my point more than that. So about two hours later, another officiant was at this event. And he goes, look, I got an, I got an officiant. I got a, a lead from you guys two hours ago. I said, show it to me. So he pulls up our the Knot app on the yeah. phone. And he looks. I said, oh, it's already booked because that officiant called it. And you did not. <laughs> So, like, just you talk about just a real live, most Re recent scenario yeah, experience. That, it's that like, shows you it right shows, then there. it shows, shows it's, right it's then and there. It's jumping on the opportunity and like not taking long to follow up. Like, just like you said, a phone number is golden. Yep. Because email, like, how many people, do, like, how many emails do you think about you have for like when I'm ordering from like, I don't know, HM, all these other stores? I have spam emails that I'm just like, that's. That's a spam email. And even if it's not, even in your inbox, like I said earlier, their email boxes are this big as they're planning yeah. their wedding. It's, the house it's is just, just emails it's a just, day. It's just getting buried. Another real live experience that this, this I think, is a, a, a great takeaway. Um, it was actually a photographer slash a video friend of mine, and she was struggling this year. At the beginning of the year, she's just like, oh, last year wasn't great. This year through it, at, at the end engagement season, wasn't it wasn't as where she needed to right. be it's her full-time job you know she's worried how she's gonna pay her bills feed her kids etc which, which is fair so i said i will help you all day long keep an open mind like keep an open mind let's look what you're doing anyway so i went through the seven emails and i helped her write all the seven email chains and and she just started testing things like for the for 10 leads, she used this subject line. For the next 10 leads, she used this subject line. She changed the promotions. She changed the um, the tips and tricks. Um, and she changed her, she went in and she didn't have great pricing on her website. And she just constantly like swung the bat. Sometimes it was a miss. Mm -hmm. But until she got to a point where you know, well now, now it's seven out of ten leads she's booking. She's she's killing it. She's absolutely killing wow. it because she put the effort into it. You know, and and honestly, that conversation started because she's a, an advertiser with us, complaining about the not leads don't mm -hmm. return. I'm like, and I went to, do you have a lead problem or do you have a booking problem? And 
a total booking problem because she was getting like 300 leads a month from us. Um, no, 175 leads a month from us. So, I mean, it was a, you got to keep an open mind and you can't just set it and forget anything out there, including I, your lead replies. But I think something key you just said for sure was the fact that she was open to reviewing her company as a whole and seeing what was working, what wasn't and rebranding and refocusing. She took responsibility for her actions. If you know, if you're not taking responsibility for your actions, if you're an entrepreneur or you're working for somebody or, and, and, you know, and you're blaming everybody else, you're going to struggle. Yeah. You're going to, you're just going to struggle, you know, and, and, and we live in this digital world where yeah. you can do this ABCD testing. We, at the Not Wedding Wire, we do ABC testing all day long. Like, why are they clicking this button when it says this word, couples, um, more than when it says this word? It goes to the same place. It infers the same thing, but there's just something resonating with this particular phrase rather the than this. The key word. The key word, right. Yeah. You know, like, so it's the same thing with your email and the same thing with your, same thing with your follow-ups. So what? two real live examples that... Um, Every other day, somebody's saying, hey, what you've taught me or what you shared with me is working. And I always say to them, I don't have the magic bullet here. I can give you the frame and the outline. You got to make it your own and you got to you got to test it. Yeah. And it's about seeing that one, be receptive to a framework, test it out and also kind of customize it to your company needs. Yes. At absolutely, the end of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's not one. Well, it's not one size fits all. Just nope. like any nope. <laughs> any person who's working in this industry or any you know, um, even professional, it's not one size fits all. We're always cut, like, especially weddings, you don't know what kind of couple you're gonna get. Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea. And what's important, <laughs> you know, they need a photographer, but photography might not be important to them. No, it might be just videography. Maybe they just want all black and white photos and Maybe. film. You, you just don't know. So what would you say are the key tips to someone who is struggling right now with booking those leads? What would it be some, like, what would be the words of wisdom from Tom, which are very powerful, <laughs> that um, you would share with our viewers and listeners? Well, let's go back to leads and bookings. Are you getting enough leads, number one? And are they the right leads, right? They might be, you might not think they're the right leads, but and then you look at how you're following up. Remember, I want you to physically, everybody look, physically <laughs> see their inbox is this big. And there's this many weddings happening in your market, and there's this many weddings of your client ideal, ideal client, but there's this many, this that you have a lot of competition out there. So take a look at your follow-ups. That is the biggest thing. Generation, the generation Z change, generation shift change. You also need to look at your products, your mark, your your services, your pricing. Um, it's not just one thing. It's a combination of, because you could have great, really great lead follow-ups and great cadences and a great sales consultation, but if your pricing is out of whack for your experience level, for the products you're offering, for the market, you're gonna struggle. Yeah. So um, realistically, it's figure out how many weddings you want next year. Let's figure out how many leads you need, and then let's work on getting that lead to booking percentage up to I mean, some of my people out there are 40, 50% of all the leads yeah. that they're getting. So. And what you said earlier, which now I, I literally want to put on a t-shirt, it's you said the math doesn't lie. M Meaning math take, doesn't lie, yeah. Facts. Take, yeah. Take those numbers and kind of see how many leads you want to book to, what was the the, the formula? The, oh, Share that formula one the, more time. The leads to booking percentage. Yeah. So say you can even take it down to out of 10 leads that you're getting, no matter where they're coming from, how many you're booking. Is it one, two, three, four? Is it 20, 30, 40%? You know, and if it's a low number, that that will, the math doesn't lie to tell you, well, I better improve my lead cadences. I better improve my lead um, follow-up, my, my content, I should say. Um, then you can take the other math and you can look at, okay, out of 10 sales consultations, how many am I booking? Yeah. Historically, people think that they book more than they really do until they really look at, look at the, the numbers. numbers. You know, but that's usually a higher number because yeah. you've been through, you know, numerous emails and conversations, et cetera, et cetera. But say you're only booking five out of 10 consultations. That's not enough. You no. need to improve your sales consultations. There's something lacking. There's something lacking. So the numbers don't lie. Good business owners 
make decisions based on facts, not feelings. We're in the facts, not feelings. We're in the we're in the relationship feeling I business. Like that. You have really great owners. quotes, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I love quotes, and I'm about to take a bunch from what you said and just make merch. We, I know we should, <laughs> we should. The, the whole idea of do you have a lead problem or do you have a booking problem? Yeah. Facts, not feeling. Yeah, math doesn't lie. Hey, I think I'm on to something. <laughs> business number three, starting for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are any closing thoughts you want to share, or better yet, what I always like to kind of end it with is. What is a quote that is so important to you or that you live by or that resonates with you a lot that you would want to share? A quote, a quote or something someone has said, or honestly, you, you I mean, are great with quotes. So something maybe you have in your pocket. I live by be kind, just be kind, be kind to your couples, be kind to wedding pros, be kind to everybody in the world. And when you're, when you're kind, it comes back tenfold. And I, I made, lots and lots of friends in this industry over the years i think part of it it was kind was and genuine kind genuine i was all i'm all, always honest you know our ceo tim chi at, at the knot he said tom is the only person in this company that can call these clients out hold them accountable and they don't get mad at them <laughs> I, but it's coming it's from a good you say, it's how you say right, it too. right and I, it's coming from a good help it's coming from a good helpful place so email me I was going to say, how can people reach out to you, yep. find you? Shoot, shoot, shoot me an email. Absolutely. you put my email. Yes, I'll on, put your email there. at the bottom here at the screen so you can and email my in Instagram. I'm trying to grow that following, people. Uh, so make sure to follow the Instagram, which also will be linked down below. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. Where I am in my life right now, I'm not looking to build a resume. I'm not looking to build a career. Because you already did that. I already sort of did that. But no, I you... Need, I he need, has done that and he continues to do that. I mean, now like, come on. I want to help. I want to help internally <laughs> and externally. That's what, that's, that's why I drove an hour and a half to you in South Florida traffic. And today. I'm so thankful that you did that. So Tom, thank you so much for being a guest today on the thank podcast. Thank you for having for me. I, I look forward to this relationship. Literally. I'm like, I was just so happy that I went to that networking event, which I have to share with you guys. This to show you, I was done after work. It was like 530 driving i think it was to aventura mm -hmm. and i was like you know what i remember seeing the flyer they said tom was coming on that it was gonna be sharing a great presentation and i'm so happy me and my work bestie went to the event in aventura because i got to meet you and then next thing you know we started talking everything and now look you guys he's a guest on the podcast which i'm so grateful for and honored so thank you tom again and make sure to follow. I'll have all his links down below. And thank you so much to all of you for listening and also viewing today's podcast. And make sure to just write down in your notebook, all those little, you know, golden nuggets Tom gave because you will not regret it and listen up and make sure to stay tuned for the next podcast episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.